Hi, and welcome to this Plant Factory tutorial about the cutout leaf node. With the cutout leaf, you can create custom meshes by cutting out shapes from an atlas map. This is especially useful for limiting the empty alpha space around the texture for better performance and for creating low polygon vegetation for games. I'll be focusing on the latter one for this tutorial. In this scene, I created a simple low polygon tree to which I connected the cutout leaf node from the geometry category. By default, this adds a plane primitive to the tree. Now, before you start creating the cutout mesh, set up your material first. The mesh you will create is tied to the material, and when you load another material, you will need to start from scratch. Also, the tiling settings will be reflected in the cutout editor view. I'm using a tiling mode of once to make sure I do not get a tiling texture preview in the editor. Okay, with the material being set up, let's go to the material tab and click on the leaf icon to open the cutout editor. Let's add a new cutout with the new button. We can give it a name in the drop down menu. And below, you can view other material channels if needed. My plant uses triangles as the global meshing mode, so I will uncheck the mixed quad and triangles option to enforce triangle creation only. I can now move points to form the outer shape of the mesh. I can add new points by clicking on an edge and I can delete a point by pressing delete on the keyboard. To control the topology flow on the inside of the mesh, I can click anywhere to add a new vertex. The orange box represents the bounding box of the whole node and not just of the mesh, and the box turns red when something in the mesh is not correct. For example, the hooking point defines where the mesh is going to be attached to the parent geometry. This hooking point can be outside of the mesh, but not outside of the bounding box. With the arrow, I can define the hooking orientation of the mesh, which is basically a baked initial orientation that every primitive will then have. But in my case, I don't care about the orientation of the hooking point, because I want to have a mesh that folds well in the middle with a midrib. This checkbox adds an edge from the rib base vertex to the rib tip vertex, and this replaces the direction of the hooking point. I can also snap the hooking point to the rib, and because I only want the rib edge for topology reasons, but I don't want it to be visible, I will smooth out the rib vertex normals. Okay, I think I am done with this cutout shape, and to create the second cutout, I could simply add a new cutout slot, or I could duplicate the existing cutout, select all vertices, and move, rotate, and scale them as needed. All right, so with the cutout shapes finished, I could now save both shapes individually to my personal library and then reuse them on any other material. By the way, Plant Factory also ships with a library of over 40 pre-made cutout shapes, which you can use as a starting point for many common leaf shapes. But for now, I think we're good, so let's close the editor. Plant Factory asks if I want to replace the former simple plane with the new cutout shape that I created, and yes, of course, I want to replace it. To now add the second cutout shape as a random variation, I will add the same material as an alternate material and select the second cutout shape. Now Plant Factory will randomly pick between the two cutouts. Next, I want to add some depth and deformations. With the lateral profile editor, I can add a nicely rounded profile along the mesh width. And with the midrib angle, I can introduce some more pronounced folding thanks to the rib edge that we activated earlier in the editor. To bend the mesh along its length, I will use the axis editor and adjust the axis plane that runs through the mesh in the XZ plane. Okay. And finally, I will add some gravitropism and a slight twist. Now let's talk about scale. 
You can adjust the relative scale of the whole node on the transfer tab as with any other node, but how big is the mesh in scene units? This is controlled by the length slider, which is currently set to 1 meter. And in contrast to adjusting the length parameter of any other node, this length parameter keeps the aspect ratio between both width and length intact, because usually you would not want to distort the mesh that you just cut out in the editor so carefully. But if you do want to change the aspect ratio of the cutout mesh, use the width tweak parameter for stretching or squashing it. There is also a scale parameter inside of the cutout editor. Let me go back to the editor. Okay, so imagine you were cutting out multiple shapes with different sizes on a complex texture atlas map. In this case, the alternate cutout meshes would also have different sizes, which depend on the shapes on the atlas map, and this might look strange. So you can then use the scaling factor here to scale the different cutouts relative to each other in the node to achieve something close to an identical size. For example, if I set the scale of this cutout to 0.5 and apply, all meshes that use this cutout shape are now 50% smaller than the second cutout, where the size is still set to 1 for 100%. So use each cutout scaling factor to level out any scaling differences from the atlas map. In the next video, we will explore meshing and LOD adjustments, so see you there. Music